preach, I was going to teach. But I guess I didn't have to. Amen. Iba a decir que no iba, no iba a predicar, iba a enseñar hoy. Iba a enseñar. Pero vamos a darle más un, un poco del tema. We're just going to go a little bit on the topic, okay? Because the Lord is speaking to me. He spoke to me this week. El Señor habló conmigo esta semana. Y eso es lo que me estaba diciendo. Y vamos para ir al, al libro de Galatas. Galatas. Galatians. We're going to Galatians chapter 1. And we're going to do bilingual service today in honor of our guests. Amen? Amen. Amen. We praise you, Lord. And Brother Starnes, will you please start us off this service with prayer that the Holy Spirit will move? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you move in such a special way. Lord, and touch hearts and lives even today. I pray that you'll bless your holy word today. Yes, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. 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 We thank you, Lord. We're going to start off really quick. I'm just going to do I, I Lydia already knows the message because I told her son on Wednesday. I said, guess what? This is what I'm teaching on Sunday. And she looked at me. I go, yeah, you get first peaks. Amen. So, este, estaba con Olivia el, el miércoles y le dije, ella ya sabe, la, ya sabe el sermón más bien, la, ense, la enseñanza. Si se me atrancan las palabras en español, perdónenme. I'm just a, if my words get stuck in Spanish, you're going to have to forgive me. I know you guys will forgive me because you won't know the difference. Well, there's a few of you that may. So, between you guys and you guys, forgive me. <laughs> You're forgiven. Um, thank you. Amen. We're going to go, and we're going to go to Galatians 1. And we're going to see what's going on here. En el primer capítulo, en el primer versículo, los estados hablando... El Apostle Paul. Paul is speaking to the church. Now keep in mind, this is what's going on. I'm going to kind of, like I said, I'm going to do a teaching. We're going to do a sermonette because, I mean, the Holy Spirit's basically already done what he needs to do. Okay. We don't need anything else. But this is going to be a teaching, not a preaching, so this is good. All right, because I'm going to tell you, I have a problem with change. How many of you have problems with change? Anybody have problems with change? In the job that I'm in, I have to change a lot. Yes. Right? A mí no me gustan los cambios. Batallo con cambios, pero en el trabajo que yo trabajo... Tengo que cambiar mucho. So uh, now it's gotten to the point where it's like, all right, Lord, you got me this far for the past two and a half years. I've been going through the change. You know, they add something else to our, our docket, and here we are. We're doing this, and we're changing that, and here we do this, and we go that way. And every time, I mean, it's like it doesn't fail. There's always something changing. And it's like, okay, we've got this going. And he's like, he's talking to the church here. Paul is talking to the church in Galatians. And he's telling them, He's like, hey, let me just tell you who I am. He said, in the first versículo, this is, this is a letter from Paul. This is una carta de, del apóstol Paulo. It was an appointed to a group of people, any human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself. This is the only verse that I popped in that was in the uh, New Living Translation. I like the other translations. Who has another translation on verse 1-1? One, one? One one. An apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Is that James? <coughs> yes, James. All right. Because I'd also done an NIV. Anyhow, so he's trying to tell you right now, straight up, I'm not appointed by man. I'm appointed by God. Man didn't put me here, Christ did. And he's talking this to the, ch to the church. That this book, or this letter, whenever you see epistle, epistle is letter. Okay? Yeah. Es una carta. Y Pablo la, la escribió de el 48 al 55 ahí por AD. So in other words, Paul wrote this letter. He wrote it anywhere between, you know, 48 to 55 AD. He'd already been there. He'd already established that church there. They didn't have problems like Corinthians did. They didn't have a Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Corinthians was kind of like Vegas. That's kind of the way you have to look at it. You know, we, we can understand what was it Sin City, right? This is not the issue with Galatians or the Galatian people. Okay? No tenían problemas como los Corintios. Esas no son las situaciones que tienen. Pero lo que tenían ellos, the problem that they had was a little bit different. Okay? And I'm telling you, the Lord is speaking to me because we see new people come into our to our work and we see new people go and, and things change. So 
Just bear with me. This is what the Lord was showing me. All right? We go on to verse 2. And all the brothers and sisters to me, to the churches of Galatia. Right? En versículo 2, Tarmas diciéndole a todos mis hermanos y mis hermanas aquí en la, en la iglesia. He goes on to verse 3. He goes, Grace and peace to you from God the Father, the Lord of Jesus Christ. Y aquí en el versículo 3 dice, Gracias y paz del, del, de Dios, el Padre y Jesucristo. In other words, he's saying, Okay, now I've told you who I am. I'm not called by man. I'm called by Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to have peace. Amen. We need to walk in peace no matter what we do. Tenemos que caminar en paz. No podemos estar juzgando. We can't be judging. No podemos estar hablando de la gente. We can't be speaking about them. Let, pay attention to what he's going to be saying here soon. He's like, look. He goes, you've got to walk in peace. Caminando, caminamos en paz. En paz. En paz. Tenemos que ir en un lugar que hay paz. Si no hay paz, no está Jesucristo. Let's be real. If there's no peace, there is no Jesus. Amen. I mean, that's, it's just the way it is. All right? And guys, I am kind of warm up here. So we're going to turn on the fans. All right? I was waiting until Ryan. I told Ryan earlier. Well, I'm not cold. Everybody else is hot. It's cold, Mom. I'm like, oh, I'm hot. So, if I'm the only one hot, I'm sorry. I'll freeze you out for a little bit. There won't be no peace if I'm hot. No va a haber paz si me encuentro. Amen. It's like, ay. Amen. So he goes on. He goes, grace and peace. He goes, gracia y paz. So many times we don't understand grace. So many times we mistake grace. And we talked about grace before. I talked to Livy and I told her what the difference between grace and mercy is. Because a lot of times we consider grace as mercy. Y pensamos que la gracia y la mercicordia, la mercicordia, thank you, is the same. Y no es igual. No es igual. It's not the same. You've got to realize, when grace, grace is abundant, I told her, like, okay, and I've made this analogy before. I've showed you this. It's like, okay, mercy is when you have to go to court and the judge says, I'm going to have mercy on you and I'm going to give you this sentence instead or I'm going to I'm going to go away and dissolve this, this issue against you. That's mercy. When you come before God that needs that is holy, and he says, I'm going to show mercy on you. That means everything that's accounted to you, I'm not going to mark it, right? But yes. this is grace. La gracia es muy distinta. He says, look, not only am I not going to charge your sins against you, now I choose to overlook your sins because I see the blood of Jesus in you. I see you as a new person. Amen. See, we've got to realize that when Christ was on the cross, he died for me and was thinking of me and took me in his place. Cuando Cristo murió era por mis pecados. And we've got to realize that we walk with him all the time. Tenemos que saber que él está con nosotros en todos casos, in every instance. And we've got to come to a place that when he comes within us, he walks through us. Él camina entre nosotros. Él está en nuestro ser. He's in our being. Amen. So when Christ, when Christ comes before the Father, cuando Jesucristo va en frente del Padre, el Padre no ve los pecados del humano. He doesn't see the sins of the human being. He sees his son and he says, Son, I love you. Amen. Glory to God. Son, come and sit at my table. Amen. Esa es gracia. Son, where have you been? I've missed talking to you. Son, Thank you, Lord. I love you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I'm going to ask the grace of Thank the Lord. You, Lord. You gotta realize that when we walk and we choose Jesus, we choose Him. That's right. Daily. That's right. I know that's not popular. Everyone say it all say, right? Not. Not. Come on, Pastor. And I'm telling you right now, that's a daily thing. You have to choose Jesus daily. Yes. You yes. have to yes. choose Him daily. Yes. I mean, I can say right now, I choose Christ. But if I turn my heart in an hour from now and I die, guess what? Yeah. I'm not going to pair 
paradise and I'm not going to heaven. If my heart changes in an hour, I don't care what you did last week. No me importa lo que pasó el año pasado, la semana pasada, el año pasado, el mes pasado. ¿Qué estás haciendo ahorita? It's good preaching. Come on, pastor. What are you doing right now? Grace says, choose him. And I mean change a heart. Keep in mind, I didn't say, don't, don't, don't misunderstand. Dije, un cambio en el corazón. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm not saying it's like, oh my gosh, you dropped the ball, you're going to hell. Because <laughs> okay. that's happened to me. I dropped the ball and praise God, grace is still here. Amen. What Amen. I'm saying is my heart right. is still with the Lord. Amen. I still chose him. Because guess what? I'm going to tell you something. In this world, you're going to fall. Oh, yeah. Right? But by grace, you're no longer going to be able to say, well, I guess I'm doing it. Right? No. no. You say, I chose you, Jesus. I accepted your sacrifice. I am not changing my heart. I'm still in love with you. Amen. Amen. Your heart hasn't changed. And then the Father will say, come, let's partake together. Vamos a compartir. Vamos a beber. Vamos a comer. Vamos a juntarnos. Let's get together. That's grace. He said, but Father, you know, I did this last week. He said, what? Did you say forgiveness? And I said, yes, Lord, I asked for Then I don't know what you're talking about, daughter. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Cuando pedimos perdón, y los recuerda al enemigo, y le decimos al enemigo, y le decimos al padre, ay, pero yo hice esto. Dijo, ¿ya pidiste perdón? Dijo, sí, entonces, pues yo no me acuerdo. Amen. Amen. We have to be that way. We have to be like Christ. We have to be like Christ. What? You asked me for forgiveness. I can't ask that, what? You did that two weeks ago, two weeks if we made it good, we made it good. Amen. Can't hold it over. Can't hold it over. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because that's not the way the Lord works. He said, grace and peace is with you. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Let's see what else he says. Because we're getting to the meat of this. We're just getting to the meat because we have to understand what grace is. He said, you know what? Grace comes from the Father. It doesn't come from anywhere else. La gracia viene del Señor, no viene de nadie más. Por el... Por la sangre de Jesucristo nosotros estamos aquí. By the blood of Jesus Christ, that's why we're here. Let's get it right. Amen. Amen. And that's what Paul was doing. Let's get it right, right from the start. Look, I come to you and I ask you to have peace. I come to you and I ask you to have grace. I'm going to tell you why. Because you need peace and you need grace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he said, come on now. He goes on in verse 4. He goes, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of God and the Father? Amen. En el versículo 4 dice, ¿Quién más? ¿Quién murió por ustedes? Who died for you? Who died for you? He said it was Jesus. Get it right. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do that you can go right before God. Unless you say, I put on Christ. Amen. No podemos hacer nada. Amen. En versículo 5, en verse 5, he says, To whom the glory forever and ever. Amen. ¿A quién glorificamos? Si no podemos venir al Padre sin, sin Jesucristo. We cannot come to the Father without Christ. We can't. That's the only way. We're getting to the meat, guys. Stay with me. Stay with me. Amen. And in verse 7, he says, There is, a, which is really no gospel at all. Eventually, some people are throwing you into confusion and trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay, esto es lo que está pasando. This is what's going on. I'm going to give you a little bit of history because I like history. This is what was going on in the church in Galatia. Esto es lo que está pasando en la iglesia. There were some people there that were teaching, and they were Jewish teachers, for the most part, that had been converted to Christianity. Okay? Eran judíos que estaban, que se habían convertido a ser cristianos. And what they were doing is all of a sudden they were imputing, okay, big word, right? Yeah. They were doing they, 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 they were doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. In other words, they were kind of bullying. You know, we've been hearing about bullying. <laughs> Guess what? That hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. They were telling people, okay, yes, follow Jesus, but you still need to get circumcised. 
Uh, but uh, you still need to do some sacrifices. Um, uh, you still have to acknowledge the feast. You, you, you still have to acknowledge this. You know what? It can't work. You can't have it both ways. La palabra dice, no puede ser las dos maneras. Tienes que hacer nomás a Jesucristo, darle la gloria a Jesucristo porque Él murió por ustedes, o no darle la gloria. In other words, you gotta give Jesus the glory for dying for our sins or you don't give Him glory at all. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you're either gonna do it on your own or you're not gonna do it. ¿Lo vas a hacer ustedes mismos o no lo van a hacer? Let's just be real. That's just the way it is. And that's what these people were doing. They were bullying. They were called Judaizers. And what that means is that they were, they were there in, in, you know, they were partaking in the things that they shouldn't have been partaking in. They thought they could still win their salvation. It's not that way. We've got to get to a point that there's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can do that can get us into heaven other than accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's it. That's all that they don't say. I don't care what you wear. I don't care what you put on your face. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how you dress, how you act. If you've accepted Jesus Christ and you say, He is my Lord, Amen. then let Him be Lord. Amen. 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 And that's what these guys were doing. Well, no, you've got to do this. Accept Jesus and you do this. No, 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 no. You either got to accept Jesus or you don't. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, but I understand their ways. You're probably saying, whoa, 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 what are you saying? I don't like change. Think about that. Think about how we've been raised. There's some things that I still do that I was doing as a kid. This tradition, it's instilled in me. Hay cosas que todavía hago porque por la tradición. Es en mi ser. It's who I am. Right? I was raised at a different time than certain people. You know, my dad sometimes doesn't understand me. <laughs> Am I right, Dad? <laughs> as much as you try. <laughs> I was raised at a different time. My kids don't understand me. Hello. <laughs> don't worry, you'll get there. <laughs> I was like, I'm talking to Michael Kathy. Like, don't worry, you'll get there. They won't understand you either. You'll be an alien. <laughs> See? <laughs> We're at a different time. We are. Does that make it bad? No. No. That's who we are. What makes it bad is when we choose not to change and accept grace Amen. and accept peace Amen. and proclaim that. Brother Max said it real well. I'm not here to judge you. You need to walk with the Lord. Amen. He needs to express express His heart on you, and you'll. I'm going to tell you from when I. When I first committed my life to the Lord, to this day, I'm going to tell you, everything changed. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm serious. It's like, desde que yo acepté a Jesucristo a este día, yo ha cambiado. Yo no me visto igual. I don't dress the same. I don't talk the same. I don't act the same. Now, did somebody tell me not to do that? No, it's just something that the Lord started working within me. And I allowed him to work within me. Trust me. It went to a time where I wore skirts down to here to a time where I wore skirts up to, you know. <laughs> hey, it is who I am, or who I was, not who I am. I was talking to Brian, and, I mean, I was talking to Dale, and I said, Brian really, you know, doesn't know that side of us where Adrian and mine, they're 12 years apart, might know us. He goes, he goes, because we're not that people anymore. I said, you're right, we're not. By the grace of God, I'm not the same person. Amen. I'm not. So it's like, you know what? You don't have to worry about that. And that's what these guys were doing. It's like they don't want to change. They like the sacrifices. They understood it. We understand it. There's certain things we do we understand. There's things that happen that we don't understand. Come on, let's be real. If something has been instilled in you, we've been raised to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And all of a sudden, somebody came and said, no, no, there's a new Messiah. We're going to be, wait. The only thing is that the good thing about us is that we've for so, for so long out that we've seen the lives that Jesus has changed. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So they can't change us. They can't move us. Right, Pastor? We will not be moved. Right. Amen. Because we've seen his hand in our Amen. life. Amen. And we'll 
visto la mano del Señor en nuestras vidas y cómo ha cambiado. Si alguien nos trata de decir que Jesucristo no es Jesucristo, nosotros vamos a decir, no, 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 porque yo sé. Yo he visto lo que Él ha hecho en, sus, en nuestras vidas, en mi vida. Amen. Amen. But you've got to understand, these guys, they were new. Jesus Christ was new. This is only 50 years out. And you probably say, 50 years out. Let's just, let's just, and I'm not gonna, let's just talk to Corey for a little bit. Okay? <laughs> Corey's, all of a sudden, Corey's eyes look up at me. He's like, <laughs> and the reason I'm saying this, Corey's from North Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina. Okay? Deep set. Even though it says north, but it's deep set. Am I right, Corey? NASCAR lives there. Lives and breathes, right? Yeah. All right. And I, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying to you. I want you to understand the thought that was going on in this church so we don't condemn the church. Corey comes from a time and a place, or not him because he's a lot younger, but his grandmother comes from a time and a place that is a lot different than a time and a place that you come from. I'm from Texas. I'm from South Texas. <laughs> I didn't experience some of those things growing up. I was the majority. <laughs> right, Michael? We're the majority. Yeah. You know? English-speaking people actually spoke Spanish. <laughs> if everybody, everybody where I come from is bilingual. For the most part. It didn't matter what race you are, you were bilingual. Am I right? Yeah. You know, so everybody's bilingual. And what the worst thing is trying to get a child that speaks that's bilingual not to, to speak all English or all Spanish. This is another story, Dad. <laughs> Boy, did I get in trouble. Either speak all English or all Spanish. Do not mix them. You gotta mix them now. They're like, see, what I see, what I see, me conviene. But it was like, do not. You either start your stand, your your sentence in English and you finish it in English, or you start it in Spanish and you finish it in Spanish. I go, well, what happens when you get stuck on a word that you can't get? Because that's what used to happen to us people that are. Bilingual, it's like, okay, where you don't get it in English, well, you stick a Spanish word in there, and you keep on going in English, right? It works for us. We all understand each other. We were good. But where Corey's from, things are a little bit different. There was a defining there. It's only been, okay, now it's been more like 70 years. But no, not even the 60s. The 60s has been a little over 50 years. Think about what happened. I mean, there was a movie called Selma. Mm -hmm. People still have that mindset. Generations are still there that have a different mindset. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And it's, does that mean that that's bad? No, that's what they were raising. Okay, granted, now we have education, now we've been taught. Yeah, you know, don't, you know. Even I, and I tell you, even in my generation, Dale's from Ohio. And there's a couple of brothers, well, not a couple, but one brother in particular, like, used to give me the blues. Because I was brown. <laughs> I did. You want me to, now this is a funny story. Rabbit trail. The funny thing is, they moved back to Ohio. His other sister comes to visit. He goes, oh, yes. So-and-so and his wife, they just love you. I'm like, really? I would have never guessed that by the way they treated me. <laughs> I didn't say that to her. I said that to them. I'm like, really? They love me? And I mean, I'm serious. When we went, to, oh, my gosh, I was like the best thing. You know, it was sliced bread. I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. I've had to endure several years with that. Dale and I never saw a line. Praise God. Uh -huh. We never saw a brown, white, or anything else. But, you know, that's just the way it is. You have to understand that's what the culture was. No estaba pasando en esa iglesia. No entendían la cultura. They didn't understand it. And Paul said, hey, hey, come on. Come on. Don't do that. Christ came. Receive that gift. Amen. And then he got a little harder. I'm not going to read it to you, but you can go on to verse 9 and verse 11. I mean, not to verse 9 and 10. And he says, If an angel himself is telling you not to be this way, curse that angel. He condemned that angel. If that was the case, he said, because the Jewish people believed in angels. Keep in mind, they were the ones that proclaimed the good news. Amen. Keep in mind, the angels were the one that said, you know, that, that Daniel encountered. 
It was an angel of the Lord that came to Mary. It, it, it was an angel that they said that, that struggled with Jacob. That's another story. We'll talk about that, whether it was or not, because that, that, that's the way he... There's versions where it says it was an angel, right? When an angel would come into the presence of the home or the place, they would fall on their face and worship. I mean, they were exalted. They're not to be exalted. They're not. They're just here to help us. Be a messenger. Be a watch out. That's it. <clears throat> Exalt angels. He said, but even if an angel himself, so he could understand, even if General Lee rose up today, Corey, he should be condemned. Amen. <laughs> and that's what he was saying. I was like, no, don't do that. He said, that explains it to you. That kind of brings it home. That shows you. That I, you know, he says, I am telling you that an angel be condemned. That's a big word. He said, Jesus taught me. And he goes back and acts. You can see that it was Jesus that taught him. You got to understand, sometimes we got to just kind of go with the Holy Spirit and trust him. Amen. You have to trust the Spirit of God. We have to have the confidence in the Spirit of God that things are going to change. They're changing. Things are changing. The Holy Spirit moves us and molds us. And he's trying to tell this church, he's like, come on, guys. Actually, he was, that, that being sweet, he was really being, come on, guys, you can't be saying that. That's really what he's saying. In this, in this particular letter, that's really what he's saying. He's really upset. I'm going to tell you, I'm being light here. But I'm going to tell you, the Apostle Paul was mad. Pablo estaba bien enojado con esta iglesia porque estaban haciendo esto. Porque estaban enseñando cosas que no debían estar enseñando. And this is why I'm telling you, you've got to, brother, brother Keith, you're strong on this. You read your word. Know your word. And I know, James, you're the same way. Read your word. Know your stuff. Yeah. Don't let anybody sway you. I don't care who's telling you what. Read the word. Amen. Study your word. And let the Holy Spirit move you. And let the Holy Spirit change you. And let the Holy Spirit be the one that guides you. Daily. Amen. Tenemos que ser sujetos al Espíritu Santo. We need to be subject to the Spirit. Always. Like we were this morning. Como la mañana. Que bello está. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Lord, Lord gave me a word. I'm waiting. Amen. Amen. In that, I just kind of now kind of curious. This is my this is this is my human side. Did anybody get a word during praise and worship? Okay. Sorry. I keep the same message on the road. <laughs> I'm blessed. Well, that's good. That's a good message. This young man last week was here. What was his name? Did we pray for that family last week? Uh huh. He, he come to me, took me aside. Kurt. 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 Yeah. He's pulled me aside and says, "Look at me in the eyes. You're blessed, aren't you?" And you're like, "Yeah, you are." Oh yeah. And he keeps telling you that over and over. Amen. Sometimes we're kids and we don't get it. And he has to remind us over and over and over and over. We're blessed, aren't we? I love you guys. Anyway, I just want to see. Like, let's just move. Let's just see. Let's just see what the Lord says and stay in Him. Amen? Let us know that it is His Spirit, not ours. Amen. Let us realize that it is Him that we walk in. Amen. Let us know that we choose Him daily. Nosotros tenemos que escoger el Espíritu Santo y a Jesucristo cada día. Cada día. Cada día. Tenemos que hacer las decisiones con el Espíritu Santo. We have to make our choices by the Spirit. Amen. You know, Kathy was telling me something about an interview of a pastor, her boss's pastor, and you know, he had a radio interview, and they said that they don't do anything unless the Spirit moves. Tell him, Isaiah. <laughs> and he said that the radio announcer that was doing the interview had a sarcastic look, like, oh, you're waiting for the Spirit to tell you what to do. Like, yeah, right. I'm like, that's the way we've got to live, guys. Amen. Amen. I mean, sometimes it may get down to, like, what should we eat? And I'm not, now you're probably saying, oh, you're way overanalyzing this. <laughs> sometimes we do. Amen. Amen. Sometimes yeah. we do. Yeah. That said, just really kind of like, 
want us to get to a perspective and to a place that we know that it is Jesus, not us. Es Jesús Cristo, no nosotros. Cuando estaban cantando el canto, nosotros no somos nada. Por eso les estaba repitiendo. We're nothing without him. Nothing. Nothing. Until we get that in our brains and in our hearts, nothing's going to change. Please. Um, a while back when I, you know, I traveled to Louisiana and I, I used it by myself and I usually, I stop a lot of times at um, like the rest stops. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one that's in between Louisiana and Texas and it's way off in the back. But I was going to stop because I had to go back in really, really bad. Well, I was getting off and the Lord said, do not stop. Do not stop there. Keep going. Well, I kind of didn't listen, and I went again, I said, I need to stop, well, I need to go back. <laughs> so I went, I turned, and I went, the Lord says, he kept real strong, turn this car around. Do not stop here. I said, okay, Lord. So I listened, I turned around, and I, I went back, towards. I've got another place to go back to. But I just, you know, I was just wondering what would happen if I did not listen to God. Amen. Because it got, I mean, it was, he was so strong, and, you know, it's like, Turn this car around now. I mean, it was just like it was like he was speaking to me yeah. in all the voice. Listen to me, child. Amen. Turn this car around. You know. So I just want to let people know. I mean, you have to listen to God. Amen. You have to, no matter yeah. what, in every situation. Amen. 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 You have to. And the more you listen to him, the more you'll be able to understand and hear his voice. Amen. It's a muscle that you have to grow. I know that sounds weird, but think about it. You see Michael with big old arms, and he's really, really strong. I'm sure that he didn't start that way. And it's the same thing with our, with our spiritual walk. We have, to, we have to develop that to be able to be subjected to his voice. Then it was good. We have to learn his voice. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to be getting fiery darts in here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, we're prayed up, we're good. But if by chance... You need prayer. We're here. 